Hey guys, welcome back to Stuff from the Cuffs and it's your boy B Sizzle. Yeah, I know the last time I had said that when you see us here, it's gonna be fun and games, but today it's gonna be some fun but no games because we're at a thousand subscribers or we've reached over a thousand subscribers and we just want to say thank you by giving back to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And you who told your mothers, sister, cousin, uncle, brother, to, to, to like, subscribe and share. We love you and we appreciate you. We're blessed to have you in our lives and we just want to give back and continue being a blessing to others. So, my today is going to be talking about probably voice and diction or public speaking. While I want to give back by talking a little bit about photography. And I want to talk about three key things that I think will help you to become a better photographer. Number one, recently I've been getting a lot of questions. What is the best camera to buy? You want to know my answer to that? Firstly, I tell people I'm not the most technical photographer. So for me, it's not about the tool. It's whatever tool you have, use it to the best of your ability. Understand what it is, understand how to use it, and you can get great pictures from it. Now, the first camera I had, Fujifilm Fine Picks. Like, it can't change lens. You can do a whole lot of stuff with this. But what I started out with, based on somebody telling me years ago that I have an eye for photography. I used to hang around a particular photographer, Robert McHugh, and I just picked up a lot from him and I give kudos to him wherever he is. Alright? So, it's not about the tool, it's about how you use it. If you can conceptualize your idea, see it or envision it, then you can capture it. And that is the first thing for me. You see it in your mind's eye, then you capture it. BMC Photography, JA. BMC stands for Beautiful Moments Captured. And I believe I'm sort of a photojournalist where I allow people to enjoy their environments and I capture it. And by thinking about what they can possibly do because of their potential, then I go ahead and I get it. And that is what makes a good photographer, firstly. I mean, a lot of people have expensive tools and they can do a lot of post-production. But if you can conceptualize the great ideas here first before you squeeze that shutter button or before you squeeze that phone button, beautiful things will happen. The second thing is lighting. Lighting is fundamental. If you don't have the proper lighting, you will not have a proper image. I mean, yes, if you have a, an iPhone 10 versus having an iPhone 1, I don't even know if that's a thing, you will have a different quality in terms of your pictures. But you can have a 1 and I can have a 10 and you take better pictures than me with a 10. Lighting is most important. I'm a person who loves natural lighting, so I don't really spend a lot on, on artificial lighting. I have to because I'm expanding my photography, but if I can do what I can do in natural light, I love it. Let's look at lighting quickly. So lighting is all about helping that image to actually be focused, to help that image to have a lot of detail, to help that image to have depth, contrast, so many things. So without light, let's look, see the difference, that's one. So in, in TV and photography there, there is something called a three-point lighting system, which is the basic lighting setup. And you'd have a key light, a fill light. So this would be my key light. Light to my right would be my fill light. And I would have a background light, which I believe in this case would actually be my roof light. So you get a different look each time. I'll quickly just bam, turn off this light. See, you're still seeing me a lot, but the, the nicer, softer tone over this side is missing. What about everything? So this is just having natural light. Natural roof light. This is the difference. So if you can understand how lighting helps to add to your photography, or even by changing the color of the light, right? You get a different look, you get a different feel, you get drama, you get excitement, you get a newsy feeler, an important interview type of setting. So if you understand all of these things, that is the first fundamental that will help you to have better pictures. Make sure you have good light. If you don't have a phone, what kind of night photography or a camera, what kind of night photography, don't think you're going to take a picture in the night and it looks good. Final thing I want to look at today is composition techniques. Now, no matter how good you are, if you don't understand the composition techniques and apply them, then your pictures will be just bland, or in other words, them are right. So things such as rule of thirds, depth of field, full frame, point of view, taking a picture from a different angle, up high, down low, all of these things will help. And I'll take a couple pictures with the help of Rene of what a difference photography. I'll take three different pictures with a different lighting and show you what the difference will look like.
So that's simply it. I mean, later on we'll talk about focus, we'll talk about ISO, shutter speed, aperture, f-stop, and, and shooting in RAW. All of those things will come at a later date. But for now, master lighting or understanding how lighting helps your picture. Master taking a picture in your mind before you actually take it in person and understand composition techniques. Every picture doesn't have to be center frame. It can be high up from a lower angle. It can be behind something else and barely peeking out. There's so many different ways to make it work. And one person said, I don't remember exactly who right now, but one person said that understanding composition and understanding how to apply it to photography will see you taking the very strongest composition technique to bring out the best out of a picture. All right, so that's it from me. Listen to what Basilia has to say as we give back after getting to 1,000 subscribers. But in the meantime, like, subscribe, share. Peace out. Hey everybody, welcome back to Stealth from the Cups. Now today's video is all about saying thank you to you for subscribing. We've hit our mark of 1,000 subscribers and we are so very grateful to you. Now in one of our last videos, we had said that when we hit 1,000 subscribers, we're going to do something special for you. And this is our way of giving back to you by sharing with you our areas of expertise. So we are sharing some knowledge today. So. Among the many hats that I wear, I also wear the hat of a university lecturer, mm -hmm. specializing in the areas of radio broadcasting, voice and diction, and public speaking. Now today I'm going to be sharing with you three tips as to how you can improve your public speaking skills. Now these are three of the many tips that you would have to employ, but I'm just giving you the jump start as to some of the things that you can do, all right? So number one, learning how to breathe properly. Now I know that this may sound a little bit funny. You're like, uh, all of us can breathe. Well, can you breathe properly? That's the question I'm asking. Now, I want you to do a quick exercise for me. I want you to put your hand on your tummy and I want you to take a deep breath in. And I want you to exhale. So you're going to inhale through your nostrils and exhale through your mouth. Let's do it again. Inhale, exhale. Now I want you to do that again and I want you to tell me if when you inhaled, if your tummy pushed out. Ready again? Inhale. Exhale. Now if you inhaled and your tummy didn't push out, as we say here in Jamaica, and when you exhale, your tummy didn't go back in, then you're not breathing properly. Yeah, you're not breathing properly. Look at it as a balloon. When you blow air into a balloon, what happens? It inflates and so it gets bigger, right? And when you let out the air out of the balloon, what happens? It deflates and so it gets smaller. Now that's the same way our lungs work. When you inhale, your lungs expand and when you exhale, your lungs deflate right so i want you now to make a conscious effort to inhale ensuring that your tummy goes out and when you exhale that your tummy goes back in all right ready again inhale exhale all right so for some people it may take a little bit more practice so just keep practicing, all right? I don't know where we learned how to inhale like this. And then exhale. And so we've learned over the years to breathe incorrectly. And learning how to breathe properly and achieving proper breath control is a part of speaking properly. And it's a part of learning how to deliver properly because you are now better able to sustain your words, all right? So that's step number one. Step number two warm-up exercises for your voice and everything that comes together to help you to deliver in an effective way. Now, just as how you have to warm up before you do your exercises, you also have to warm up before you speak. 
Now, for those of you who may know the term tongue-tied, have you ever been speaking and you kind of feel tongue-tied like your tongue is all over the place and you're tripping over your words? A lot of times this is due to the fact that you have not properly warmed up your tongue and compare how you sound when you just wake up to when you are actively in your day two different sounds right you can easily tell when you've called somebody and you wake them up versus somebody who has been awake for many hours and you know is actively engaged in conversations their voices sound different so you have to warm up your voice and an effective way that you can use to warm up your voice is saying the do re mi fa sol la ti do so you start in a lower tone a low pitch do re mi fa sol la ti do right so you can do that to start warming up your voice now there are other things that come into play when you have to speak we spoke about breathing right deep inhalations and exhaling and when you're doing do re mi fa sol la ti do you take a deep breath in and then you utilize that breath to say do re mi fa sol la ti do right and then i want you to warm up your jaw so a quick exercise that you can do you make two fists and you warm up your joint circular motion so you're kind of giving your face a massage yeah giving your face a massage right so you can repeat that and then you're going to warm up your tongue now there's an activity that I always teach my students and they find it so hilarious but it works it's effective yes it works warming up your tongue easy exercise <laughs> Right? You may not get it at first, but you can keep practicing. Now, what this activity does is to help your tongue to become active quickly so that you can avoid getting tongue tied. All right, so that's also something you can do. So, your breathing exercises, your do re mi fa sol la ti do, your, you know, massaging of your, your jaws, yes, and of course, your. And the last one that I would want to do under helping to warm up your voice and warm up everything that you utilize to deliver properly is making big bites. So big bites like this. So what this does is to help your jaw to be ready. Yes, your jaw muscles to be ready for speaking. So that covers your warm up exercises. And the last point that I'll share with you today as to how you can improve your delivery skills or your presentation skills or your public speaking skills is utilizing inflections. Now, what are inflections? Inflections has to do with the upward or downward movement in the pitch of your voice. Now, what this does is it helps you to not sound monotonous. It helps you to not sound boring, right? Imagine speaking to somebody or imagine listening to someone who is speaking on one level. After a while, you become bored, you become disinterested, and you're not really trying to hear what that person is saying. You want to ensure that you utilize the pitch in your voice in an upward and downward movement so that you can keep your audience engaged. So you hear me speaking to you and at this moment I'm utilizing my upward inflection and then I go into utilizing my downward inflection just to ensure that I don't always sound like I'm speaking the same pitch in the same tone and I'm giving you variety. Now when you utilize the upward and downward movement in your voice you keep your audience engaged, you grab your audience's attention, and you keep them for the duration of your speaking engagement. If I'm talking to you on one straight level, then there is no guarantee that I will keep your attention. But if I utilize my upward and downward movement in the pitch of my voice, then I stand a better chance of keeping you entertained, keeping you engaged, and of course, giving you the information that I want to deliver in an effective way. 
So those are three things that I want you to keep in mind before you do your next presentation, before you do your next public speaking engagement. Breathing properly, warm up exercises for your voice and everything that comes together to help you deliver and of course utilizing the upward and downward movement in pitch with your voice to add a little flavor to your presentation to help you to avoid sounding monotonous all right so that's my gift to you in terms of us saying thank you thank you for watching thank you for subscribing thank you for liking and be sure to leave us a comment all right this has been another edition of stuff from the cuffs. Later.